who uh, says he works on robots, but James, maybe you can help me here. Uh, this doesn't look anything like C3PO. It, it looks, I, I know, they, they, look, they, look like, they look like overgrown hockey pucks. Um, so what makes something a robot? So, so my definition is, is pretty basic. Uh, I, need, I need my robots to, to do three basic things. They need to sense the world, they need to compute about what they have sensed, and then, then they need to actuate, they need to do something in the world. Um, they need to affect some change either by um, uh, moving themselves in the world or moving the world. And, and we're working on both of those uh, down here in the multi-robot. So it's those lab. three things that is, you think that characterize something, being a robot. Sense, compute, act. Regardless of size, shape, function, those three things they need to do. So it can't, that, that, that casts a broad net. You could argue that, that when I fly, I fly in a robot. You could argue that my car is becoming robotic. You could argue that my dishwasher at some level, as it looks at the dirt that comes off my dishes, is acting like a robot because it changes its washing cycle. Um, but in particular, the robots I care about are ones that are autonomous. Uh, robots that we give some goal to, or something that we want them to do. And it's their job to figure out how to do it. But you're not just interested in individual work. That would right? be really boring. Right? So most of us think, you know, for us, clean the floors, um, drive our cars. Uh, why are swarms interesting? So, in order to understand that, we have to reverse engineer my psychology. Um, so I don't have a good answer for that one. But I can tell you that for almost anything that you, you want to do, uh, um, I can come up with some solution where I can do it with lots of robots. So some tasks are, are easy, um, tasks like exploration, search and rescue, surveillance, um, manipulation. If you have a warehouse full of, of, of books and DVDs, maybe you're Amazon and you want to get them to customers efficiently. Robots are ideal for this. Um, if you're trying to uh, look for survivors in earthquakes, robots are fantastic. You've got maybe cockroach-sized robots about this big. Are we going to see these robots do anything? Or Ah, good question. So let's, let, let's go ahead and run some. So what, we'll, what, what we've got now, is the standard uh, four or five um, standard behaviors. Um, so off we go. So what you've got, let, let's, let's get them turned on. Um, so there's a power button on the far back. Yep. Gives me a real sense of accomplishment. That's right. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to get them to follow each other in a line. And we don't want them to follow in any random line, we want them to do it in an organized line. So we're gonna have them um, follow themselves in order. Um, so what's going to happen is each robot is going to look around itself and look for the robot that is immediately preceded it in the sorted list of robots. Um, so um, they're going to use a distributed algorithm to get themselves to follow in order. So I'm ready to figure out who the leader is, robot 9. That's the robot with nobody less than it. We're going to turn 9 around a little bit so we don't lose them. 17 should fall in right after 9 and then 19 and then 27. So they use their infrared sensors to communicate, and they also use them to avoid things like my shoe. Um, and their communication is key. Um, the same way um, that communication is critically important in ants and bees, um, without communication they can't do anything. Um, if you go ahead and get your foot in front of that one, you can send it back this way. There we go. Alright, I'm going to tell them now to flock. So now instead of all heading um, um, and after one leader, they're all now trying to face the same direction. Um, so they're averaging out their headings and all um, reaching a nice coordinated flock. I should be able to still get them to avoid me and that's going to cause confusion the same way if I were a predator um, and a school of fish. Um, but once they get away from me, they'll settle down back into a nice happy flock again. So, so the fancy word for this kind of stuff is self-stabilizing, and this is critical. When you have large numbers of robots, they have to settle into what you want. You can't expect to command them all from a centralized location. You can't expect to have complete control. They need to do their, do, do, do their thing. So how did you get interested? What, when you were growing up, what was, it? was there a key moment where you said, <laughs> I um, want to do cool things. So, I want to so build robots. If you want to know the truth, let me get these to be a little more quiet. Um, my motivation, and I, I say this in my talks when I, when I give lectures, is I just wanted to build better toys. Um, I started with cardboard boxes to make forts, and, and, and I had a little tank with a ping pong gun inside, which was just a box with the bottom cut out so I could push it around the house, and then I put a ping pong gun to shoot my mother, because that's what you do when you're eight. Um, and then from there, I went on to um, model trains and Lego uh, video games. 
Um, so when I was uh, growing up, video games were very much like the cell phone games are today, where they're very easy to make a nice, fun game. Um, and uh, radio control cars, the fancy, high-performance ones. So all those things together, you put all that technology together, and you end up with pretty much a robot, which is what I built when I was in high school. And it was so much fun that I kept on building more robots. And then people started noticing I was having fun. People asked me to, 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 to be in exhibits about invention and play, and I got to go meet C3PO and R2D2, and it just kept on being more fun. So fun, inspiration, passion, curiosity. There we go. There we go. Thank you so much. I'm here with James McLurkin studying swarms of robots. Maybe not going to change your life tomorrow, not but tomorrow. in the future, I hope so. Aid us in lots of problems. Yeah, that's the plan.